Hello children, hope you all in good health and high spirits. Today we are going to learn a new lesson, Unit 7, Gulliver's Travels. Children, have you ever come across the words biography and autobiography? Some of you say yes. Anyway, first let me tell you what is a biography. When a person writes the life story of someone is called a biography. But this story is an autobiography. When a person tells the story of his life in his own words, it is called an autobiography. This prose or lesson is extracted from Gulliver's Travels written by Jonathan Swift. Gulliver went on four voyages but this story tells us about second voyage that Gulliver takes. Gulliver, a sailor, was once caught in the land of giants. This is how he describes his experience in this lesson. Now, let's move on to the lesson. Book Reading on the 16th of June, 1730, we discovered land. Our captain sent a dozen men with vessels for water, if any could be found. Explanation On the 16th of June, 1730, Gulliver the sailor set off his second sea voyage. Set off means begin a journey. Let me continue the explanation. Gulliver finds himself along with his companions in the land of giants called Brobdignag. The captain sent a few of them to check out for water on the island. Difficult words. First one, dozen men, meaning a group of 12 people. Second, vessels. It means containers for water. Back to book reading. When we came to land, we saw no river or spring nor any inhabitants. I went on to explore. The country was barren and rocky. Explanation. When they reached the land, they did not find any river, spring or inhabitants. Spring means underground source of water. Inhabitants means people or animal live in a particular place. Gulliver went around the island to get to know about the country. He found that the country was without any plants or trees, but it was a rocky land. Rocky means full of rocks. Difficult words. Barren. Land with no vegetation. No vegetation means no plants or trees. Next word, explore, which means to get to know something. Let me continue book reading. I turned back to join the crew, only to see them getting into the boat and rowing for life to get to the ship. Explanation As he found the country was barren and rocky, he went back to his boat to get to the ship. When he reached there, he saw his men were running away in a boat as if they were trying to save their life. Here the difficult word is crew, meaning a group of people, especially in ship. Back to book reading. Before I could reach them, I observed a huge creature walking after them in the sea. As fast as he could, the water of the ocean reached only till his knees. 
However, the monster was unable to overtake the speeding boat. Explanation here I refers to Gulliver. Before Gulliver could join his men, he saw a huge creature following them. The monster waded in the water as fast as he could to reach the boat. Since the water of the sea reached only up to his knees. However, the monster couldn't overtake the boat as they were rowing the boat speedily. Difficult words. First one, a huge creature. A huge creature means a person who is in a very big size. Another word, monster. Monster also carries the similar meaning, which means a man of giant size. Back to book reading. I turned back quickly and climbed up a steep hill with fields of barley on either side and the corn rising up to 40 feet. There was a fence to pass from one field to the other. Explanation All of a sudden, his companions were chased by a huge creature. Gulliver realized that this land was inhabited by the huge men. They are almost like giants. Luckily, his companions were escaped. But now Gulliver was all alone on this land. In order to escape from the monster, he started climbing quickly on a steep hill with barley fields and the corn rising up to 40 feet. Gulliver saw a fence to go from one field to the other. Difficult words. Steep hill. Sharply angled hills. Second one, barley. Meaning, it is a kind of grain used for food. Next one, fence. Meaning, it is a wooden structure which is used for enclosing an area. Book reading. It was impossible for me to climb because every step was six feet high. I was trying to find a gap in the hedge when I discovered one of the inhabitants in the next field walking towards the fence. Explanation Gulliver saw a field that has got a six feet high fence that he could not climb. He then saw another giant in the next field carrying a reaping hook. On seeing him, Gulliver was trying to hide himself in a gap in the hedge. Difficult words. First one, hedge, meaning row of bushes or shrubs along the edge of a field. Next, reaping hook, meaning a tool which is used to reap the corn. Back to book reading. He was of the same size as the creature chasing the boat. I was struck with atmosphere and astonishment and ran to hide myself. Explanation. Gulliver saw the giant carrying a reaping hook. He was a farmer who was coming towards the fence. He looked similar to the monster who chased the bird. He got frightened and was surprised and ran to hide himself among the plants. Let me continue book reading. He called in a voice much louder than a trumpet. It sounded like thunder. Seven monsters like him came towards the field ready to reap the corn. Explanation 
he called his other friends his voice was much louder than a trumpet it sounded like thunder seven other monsters like him came there to reap the corn back to book reading they carried a reaping hook which was very big when one of the reapers approached where i lay hidden i screamed as loud as i could explanation the farmers carried a very big reaping hook to reap the corn but one of the monsters saw galivo hiding among the plants on seeing the monster galivo was scared and shouted loudly here the difficult word is reap reap means to cut book reading the creature stopped reaping picked me up between his thumb and forefinger and brought me close to his eyes 60 feet above the ground explanation however to his surprise the monsters were kind to him one of the farmers stopped reaping and picked gully up between his thumb and forefinger and brought him closer to his eyes to get a better view of his face when the farmer held galivo in his hand it was 60 feet above the ground book reading he looked at me with a curiosity and blew my hair aside to get a better view of my face explanation he saw galivo as if he desired to know something and blew his hair aside to get a good look of his face back to book reading he called his friends and gently placed me on the ground they all sat on the ground to take a good look at me explanation one of them picked him up and placed him on the ground the rest of the giant farmers came there and sat to have a look at him let me continue book reading i walked slowly backward and forward pulled off my hat and made a low bow towards the farmers i tried to speak to them loudly in several languages each time i did so the farmer who picked me up held his ear very close to me but in vain explanation galivo walked to and fro took off his hat and bowed towards the farmers galivo then attempted to talk to them in different languages but he was unable to communicate anything with them each time the farmer held his ear close to galivo but he could not understand him book reading the farmer took me to his house and placed me at some distance on the dining table which was 30 feet high from the floor dinner was brought for the farmer in a dish which was 10 feet in diameter explanation as galivo was so little in size the farmer mistook him for an animal the farmer thought that he might be a good amusement for his daughter that's why he took galivo home with him the farmer placed galivo on a dining table which was 30 feet high from the floor then the farmer's wife brought dinner for the farmer in a dish which was 10 feet in diameter 
book reading. The farmer's wife crumbled some bread and placed it before me. In the middle of the dinner, I heard a noise behind me. It was the purring of a cat that was ten times larger than an ox. The farmer's wife was stroking him. Explanation? Being the kind person, the farmer's wife crumbled some bread and gave it to Gulliver to eat. When Gulliver was having his dinner, he heard the noise of a cat, which was ten times larger than an ox. Gulliver was scared of the cat. The farmer's wife was stroking him to get rid of his fear. Difficult words. First, crumbled, meaning broken into pieces. Next, purring, means the noise of the cat. Next, stroking. The meaning of the word stroking is move a hand gently over someone or something. Book reading. Then entered the farmer's one-year-old son in the arms of a lady. On seeing me, the child grabbed me from the table and put my head into his mouth. Explanation Then an old lady arrived there with the farmer's one-year-old son. The child saw Galivo and grabbed him from the table and put him into his mouth. The child did so, thinking Galivo as doll. Back to book reading. I shouted so loudly that the baby dropped me. I would have broken my neck if the mother had not held her apron under me. Explanation Gulliver shouted so loudly that the child got shocked and dropped Gulliver down. Gulliver could have broken his neck if the farmer's wife had not caught him in her apron. Book reading. Later, she put me on her own bed and covered me with a clean white handkerchief. I slept dreaming of my home, my wife and my children. This story is adapted from Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Explanation. Later, the lady put Gulliver on her own bed and covered him with a clean white handkerchief. Gulliver slept and dreamt of his home, his wife and his children. Thus, the huge people had shown that they were such kind creatures. That's all the story of Gulliver's travels. Second sea voyage in the land of giants called Brobdignag. Children, hope you all enjoyed and learned the story. Before we wind up, let me remind you that this story is an autobiography. Dear children, have you ever come across autobiography of any other authors? Let me tell you. First, the story of my life is the autobiography of Helen Keller. Next, the story of my experiments with the truth is the autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi, father of our nation. Children, keep this in mind. With this, we wind up our today's class. See you all.